Well, hello and welcome to another edition of the Cogentivist Chronicles here on Spreaker today and YouTube and whatever other platform I might integrate with, decide to integrate with. I'm your host, Bobby Sage, and today is Sunday, the 6th of January, 2019. Broadcasting from my situation here, my studio. And again, I want to welcome you. Thank you very much for dropping by and checking me out. I just got through spending an inordinate amount of my day binge watching. Was it surviving R. Kelly? Lifetime uh, channel presentation of surviving R. Kelly. And I got to say, the first impulse or the first impression I got from it is one, he's being protected, of course, and that's obvious. And two, he's been enabled. There are enablers around him that are protecting his interests and facilitating him or allowing him to continue with what largely is misconduct and inappropriate behavior. I mean, you've had scholars, people that are more scholarly than me, of course. I don't fall into that realm whatsoever. I'm just a a guy on the street that chronicles things. And I'm of a certain age. But anyway, enough about me. The thing is, is he is being, I won't say protected. Because he's making money for, well, a lot of people. A lot of people are going to be out of a job. And he's making money for his, well, I term it as being his handlers. And it's 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 really putrid and disgusting to realize to fully realize what all this guy has done. And he's he's essentially gotten off scot free. Now, the the, the one episode I watched where the um, who was it? The uh, the uncle of the victim. Well, when when, when they did try to pursue a criminal case in, in Chicago. Was it Cook County? But they tried to pursue a, a case in Chicago when he urinated on that 14-year-old girl. Right? Well, first of all, he should have been watched from jump. We knew this anyway. But the, the, the thing is, and it, it didn't fully occur to me, because I, to be honest, I have not really followed hip-hop and, 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 and 90s R&B all that closely. I, I, I didn't really follow, I haven't really followed the culture all that close. Especially during this time, because I was at an age where I was pursuing a career. You're talking about 19, the early 1990s. You know, you're talking talking like early 1990s, the um, greater Los Angeles area. And I was saddled with having to figure out what I was going to do for a living. I'd been out of service, out of military service for a number of years. It was time to pursue the rest of my life. Anyway, you know, the music was out and on and popping. And he makes this this discovery of this girl named Aaliyah. Rest in peace, by the way. Um, You know, I'm not not gonna say anything disparaging her, disparaging the dead. That's not my, that's not my style. But what really caught my attention is that apparently he was linked up with her, where she was, she linked up with him when she was 12 years old. I guess the guitarist in, in, in one of the guitarists or one of the instrumentalists, whether a session musician or not, or someone that was closely affiliated with Kelly, a guitarist that was affiliated with Kelly, that, that Aaliyah was his niece. So my point is, he knew early on what he was going to do with this girl. It's obvious. And basically she was in a pattern of grooming which is which is uh common in from what i understand in in, in pedophilia circles by the way I, I would encourage anyone out there to actually see a motion picture production that's out that you can you can still see it it's uh an open secret an open secret there there are two of them but the one is made by gabe i believe gabe hoffman if I got the name right, I hadn't even looked it up. Now, I'm going off the cuff here. I'm not going off the paper. But uh, An Open Secret it talks about pedophilia in the entertainment motion picture industry di- directly. 
and it, 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 it chronicles, I believe, uh, Brian Singer and a few other people affiliated and associated with um, grooming young boys for sex. So in, in, invariably, that's what, what it is you have in an R. Kelly. You have someone that, that has this type of behavior existing within them. And we may not know if there are any other victims, how many more victims might be out there. But for what I read today on my news feed, on my social media news feed, is that there have been a number of calls, um, you know, placed to uh, a, a sexual assault hotline that, that, that they've received an increase, an influx of calls after this presentation. Now, now, whether or not they have to do with R. Kelly, we don't know. That remains to be seen. But the stats for that have gone up. As well as another stat that that is somewhat off putting that has to do with, I, I guess, his his music downloads have gone up 16 percent. Yet this guy is, well, this picture is being painted of him being a predator that prefers young girls. And it just I was just. I, I sat, I believe it was all six episodes. I believe it was six. And I, I binged watched all of them. It was just blowing my mind the whole, the whole way. And there's another point I wanted to bring up, but um, I want to take a brief break here and, uh, and I'll get right back to you in just a moment. All right, I'm back. I had a bit of a frog in my throat. If that matters. And I'm back again talking about R. Kelly. Now, um, the other thing that stood out when I was watching it, one of the episodes I was watching, because I watched all six, one of the things that I noticed, uh, well, the reason why the case didn't go through is because it was the, was it the uncle? The uncle of the, of the 14-year-old victim that he urinated upon. What year was that case? Was it, yeah, it was, it was, Early 2000s, late 90s, I forget. Anyway, the victim that was urinated upon, that he urinated on, during the, 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 the trial, the uncle apparently disputed the claim, disputed that that was her in the video. Because, you know, there's a video that was circulated. It was circulated through uh, swap meets, flea markets, um, stuff like that. So this is somewhat predated, um, I believe it predated YouTube and, and, and Google and all that stuff. So all this stuff was available on DVD. So you can get this, get this through, uh, you know, going to swap meets, flea markets on the street, right? Because on the street level, a lot of these people saw this video and this was admitted into, into testimony. So during this case, as it was being heard, right? The it was under testimony. The guy, the 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 uncle on the witness stands, could not identify her. Said it wasn't her. Yet the uh, the recording artist uh, Sparkle, who introduced um, basically you know introduced the girl to to R. Kelly and and and, and you know got her to the studio or whatnot, and she's feeling really bad about the whole thing. I mean, it broke her down. It basically decimated their family but she she identified the girl on the video as, as being her that was her that was her uh her relative but the the other the, the testimony from the other relative disputed that so apparently that was the crux in kicking the, getting the case kicked loose no criminal charges were filed and he was left r kelly was left to carry on as he has been with uh, very few exceptions. I mean, some tours have gotten canceled. He's lost, I guess he's lost some money or his operation has lost money or his brand has lost money. But he still escapes any kind of prosecution or prosecut prosecutory effort. You know, and, and I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's fair to compare this to others like uh, Roman Polanski, Woody Allen, and others that have gotten away with it. Kevin Spacey, 
even. You know, with Kevin, the deal with Kevin Spacey, he's he's been identified as a predator. Going after, you know, and, and, and going after these young men, young men and boys. So you have to think that that, you know, they're they're utilizing or are being protected in some way, shape, or form, or being otherwise enabled. So the question I have now is this. I just have to wonder what's going to happen now. I mean, episode after episode after episode today, there were these uh, victims that people that were victimized by this guy. And then um, it, it's funny because I, I made, I, I actually um, committed the mistake of looking at other comments on social media about it and listening to other podcasters and well, I'm, I'm kind of admittedly, admittedly biased against R. Kelly. Anyways, I, I, I don't, I don't really like his music because of the the objectionable content, and it, it 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 wasn't anything that I felt was personally redeeming to me. So I never really was a fan. I never have been a fan. I never, I never really got into his music. And as a matter of fact, I don't, I, I don't have anything in, in, um, in my collection that I believe in my, my music collection at all that I know of, unless he, unless it's something that he done, that he's done in collaboration with other artists, you know, which is the case. But anyhow, it, it's just uh, strange to me that for one, it's, it's lasted this long that he's been able to go about his business and even still to this day there's there's a there's a young lady that still is there with him i mean there have been allegations that he's running a cult type of atmosphere and you know there are women that are staying with him for these different you know sexual trysts whatnot and a lot of these things were covered in the in the episodes that i watched but um, really, at some point in time, oh, here's sorry about that. Crazy updates. At this point in time, he's still running around scot free. He's still running around. He's able to actually generate an income and have some semblance of a living. And there's some there, there's some gall associated with that. It's sickening. But I digress. Anyway, um, let me see. Any other topics I covered relevant to this? I, I can't think of anything else. It just boggles my mind. I think there's going to be another presentation either tonight or tomorrow. I think tonight. I haven't checked the program notes. But there's going to be an, another episode coming up here soon. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, I, at first I wasn't going to watch it. I wasn't going to watch any of it. But I wanted to see it and make up my own mind, you know, and actually see if there was anything to glean from it. But like I said, I, I actually committed to making the mistake of, of listening to other social media um, content presenters that are saying, you know, this that this being made by um, a group of feminists that and, 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 you know, we know who supports the the, 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 um, the feminist right in this country. I mean, it's been said that is supported by uh, white supremacy, white dollars. So that this is some kind of contrivance to deliberately go after R. Kelly because he's someone in a position that has a lot of money, make, has ability to make a lot of money. He's selling out. He does apparently sell out stadiums or has been. And he's, you know, he's a top level recording artist, top shelf recording artist. That's what what he's been, you know, placed up there as as a as a top level recording artist with all these different uh, album releases and song titles and collaborations he's 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 had through the years and the I don't, i'm not sure if there's any valid argument but I, for one let me just say from from my own standpoint as a human being i don't support pedophilia right and then people are drawing comparisons between him elvis presley chuck berry Jerry Lee Lewis 
but you also have to consider the the um you know i'm not saying there's any excuse for it there's never an excuse for that for that type of behavior you know these guys actually went after girls and obviously it looks like to me that there's there's still some victims out there and hopefully they'll come forward hopefully they will come forward and um, hopefully there'll be some type of resolution to this entire mess. But in the meantime, in between time, hopefully there's not a, more of an increase in his music streams. But see, then again, people are able to separate the music from the bad deeds. I don't know. I don't know if I don't like if I don't like an artist, I don't like an artist, period. And I don't have to do anything to support him, at least knowing, knowingly supporting him. Well, anyway, that's my time for now. I just wanted to chime in, um, just go off the cuff. And uh, I guess it's a way of of my venting. I I don't know if I'm going to do an accompanying blog to this topic or not. I have to see. I got a few other things in the queue that I'm going to be releasing here. Uh, a couple other uh, blog items that I would like to actually talk about as well. But we'll see what I can get done here in the next couple of days, the next few hours. Maybe I might post something up. But this is Bobby Sage today, the on the Congentivus Chronicles, and enjoy the rest of your Sunday and uh, have a good week coming up. Okay, peace. <laughs>